Wait a second. Ah! Hello. Sonic! That's no good. This video was shot with an Insta360 Evo camera. That means it is a VR180. It is best viewed with a VR headset or simple Google Cardboard goggles. And now I will read from the SCP-939 wiki. Item number SCP-939, object class Keter. I will skip the special containment procedures for now. Let's go to the description. SCP-939, also known as With Many Voices, are endothermic pack-based predators which display atrophy of various systems similar to troglobitic organisms. The skins of SCP-939 are highly permeable to moisture and translucent red owing to a compound chemically similar to hemoglobin. SCP-939 average 2.2 meters tall, standing upright and weigh an average of 250 kilograms. The weight is highly variable. Each of their four limbs are in three fingered claws with a fourth opposable digit and are covered in setae, which considerably augment climbing ability. Their heads are elongated, devoid of even vestigial eyes or eye sockets, and contain no brain casing. The jaws of SCP-939 are lined with red, faintly luminescent fang-like teeth similar to those belonging to specimens of the genus Coleotus up to 6 centimeters in length and encircled by heat-sensitive pit organs. Eye spots, sensitive to light and dark, run the length of their spine dorsal ridges. These spines may be up to 16 centimeters long and are believed to be sensitive to changes in air pressure and flow. SCP-939 do not possess many vital organ systems. Central and peripheral nervous systems, circulatory system, and digestive tract are all absent. SCP-939's respiratory system is atrophied and serves no apparent purpose beyond spreading AMN-C-227. SCP-939 have no apparent physiological need to feed, nor any way to digest consumed tissue. Ingested material typically accumulates in the respiratory system of SCP-939 and is reg regurgitated once the amount is sufficient to markedly inhibit its function. Despite the absence of many vital organ systems, SCP-939 are capable of bearing live young. SCP-939's primary method of luring prey is the imitation of human speech in the voices of prior victims, though imitation of other species and active nocturnal hunts have been documented. SCP-939 vocalizations often imply significant distress. Whether SCP-939 understands their vocalizations or are repeating previously heard phrases is the subject of ongoing study. How SCP-939 acquire voices is not currently understood. Specimens have been documented imitating victims despite never hearing the victim speak. Analysis of SCP-939 vocalizations cannot distinguish between 939 and samples of known victims' voices. The use of biometric voice recognition, security, or identification systems at any install installation housing 939 is strongly discouraged for this reason. Prey is usually killed with a single bite to the cranium or neck. Bite forces have been measured in excess of 35 megapascal. SCP-939 exhale minute traces of an aerosolized Class C amnestic, designated AMN-C227. It causes temporary anterograde amnesia, inhibiting memory formation for the duration of exposure, plus an average of 30 minutes. It is colorless, odorless, and tasteless, with an estimated ECT50 for inhalation of 0.0015 milligrams per minute cubic meter. In well-ventilated or open air environments, risk of exposure to ECT50 is greatly reduced, but not negligible. AMN-C227 is typically undetectable in the bloodstream 60 minutes following cessation of exposure. Reported cessation, sensations of disorientation and mild hallucinations immediately follow in removal from environments saturated with the agent are similar to recreational use of numerous psychoactive substances and easily mistaken as such. Okay, so should we go back to the special containment procedures or talk a little bit about this model? As you can see, 
to color this I used uh, red crayon melted all over it to kind of create a translucent hemoglobin like uh, look to it and I uh, just took a little while here <laughs> to get all the nooks and crannies around his arms um, this SCP completely reminds me of like a poison dart frog or something similar to that um, of course the spines and the sharp teeth uh, are definitely the added attribute that distinguishes it from such a creatures let's uh, go to the special containment procedures SCP-939-1-3-19-53-89-1 are kept in cell 1163-A or 1163-B, which is a 10 meter by 10 meter by 3 meter containment chamber within armed biocontainment area 14. Both cells are environmentally regulated and negatively pressurized with walls constructed of reinforced concrete. Access to these cells is regulated by an outer decontamination chamber and inner gas tight steel security doors. Observation windows are constructed of laminated ballistics glass 10 centimeters in thickness protected by a 100 kilovolt electrified mesh. Humidity is maintained at 100 percent at a temperature of 16 degrees Celsius. Specimens are monitored at all times via infrared cameras. Level 4 authorization is required to access SCP-939, their containment areas, or the observation chambers. SCP-939-101 is dismembered and stored in cryogenic preservation tanks 939-101A to 939-101M within Biologic Bio Research Area-12. Access to SCP-939-101 requires authorization by level two clearance level three personnel, one of which must be present for all research and testing. The contents of only one 939-101 tank may be accessed at any given time. Core temperatures of SCP-939-101 tissues must be monitored while removed from cryogenic preservation. Should core temperature exceed 10 degrees Celsius, tissues are to not to be returned to their corresponding tank and all testing suspended for a period of 72 hours. Barring core temperature exceeding 10 degrees Celsius, research of SCP-939-101 tissue may be continued as long as its ramblings and pleas for release may be tolerated. Like my ramblings and pleas for release. Containment cells should be cleaned bi-weekly. While this takes place, SCP-939 specimens will be transferred to the adjacent cell. During this time, the cell's door and observation window must be inspected for damage and repaired or replaced accordingly. Heavy sedation of all SCP-939 is required before any interaction including transfer between cells and experimentation may take place. And I'm going to wrap up the containment procedures there, just a little bit shorter. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, uh, leave a comment that really helps us out. We're striving to reach 50,000 subscribers by the end of the year, and we can only get there with your help. So please, we like to do what the fans request, and this was requested by many fans, and you guys know who you are. So hopefully you're watching this, and you, if you want more SCP, more Sonic, or whatever, let us know, and we will try to make those videos, and uh, stay tuned for more, guys. 173!